Hello, my name is Dale Wilhite. I'm lo uh, living right now in northern Florida for about another week, and then I hope to be heading off to Hawaii. If you want to find anything about me, go to MySpace, where I have an account. I also have an account with Facebook, and I'm also on Twitter. This here is about where the sleeper cells in America may be uh, hiding, and I'm talking about Islamic sleeper cells. Uh, these are people who uh, the American government and many of us believe are uh, here waiting for orders from either Osama bin Laden or, or the leaders or the nuts in Iran and some of the clerics in Afghanistan and Sudan and other places uh, to attack the United States in a massive scale from within. We do have sleeper cells here. You may have talked to somebody from a sleeper cell in, in, you know, somewhere along the way and you don't even know it. And of course, that's the way they want it. And the question that comes to mind is where are these sleeper cells at? Where are these people at? Where they located at of course they could probably be in a uh, more of a muslim community they might be attending uh, a mosque you know uh, might be found as clerics there and uh or worshiping there of course most of them are not most muslims in america are not terrorists you know i'd say almost 99 and a half half percent are not but here's the question is where are the sleeper cells have you noticed that no one in the media seems to ask that have you noticed that the fbi seems to make no attempt to say, well, we need help, we need your help to try to find these guys. Has anybody ever bothered to ask the question, where are the sleeper cells? Where are they? What is the FBI doing to find them, if they're here? Well, here's one possibility of where they just might be. And please don't get paranoid about this, and please don't stereotype uh, the people I'm about to mention here when you go to the next, when you go to a motel somewhere for the night, or to rent one. My opinion, and this is based on, on some of the things I've seen over the last 30 years, uh, with all the motels I've been traveling to, actually about 32 years, uh, is that some of these sleeper cells could be operating out of the motels that they have bought here in the United States. We all know if you've stayed in mo enough motels that uh, almost all our motels now are foreign owned. And of course, I believe that 99.9% .9 of these motels that are foreign owned are, are bought by people who are just here to make a living, want a business, and, that's, and just want to live in America, and they're using that as a means to live in America. And nothing more. But if I'm a terrorist and I want to a place to hide out, if I want a place to reside, a place where I can uh, go pretty much unnoticed, motel would be a great place to do it. And only one would even be better. Of course, if I can't do that, then I'm going to send some family members over to the United States or somebody part of my network, terrorist network, and get them to buy it. And when they run, when the government runs the background check on them, checks them all out, they'll come out clean. Well, they would be my eyes and ears as to what's going on in America. That's what I'm trying to say. And I bet you anything that when we are eventually attacked from within in a massive scale, and maybe even in a, in a, in a uh, random scale, that I think you're going to want to hear the people in the media come on and say that the FBI has discovered that this terrorist or terrorist network was operating out of American motels that they bought, from, uh, that they had bought. Now that doesn't mean the people operating them are uh, part of the attack, but it just means that they may be eyes and ears and reforming the people back in their country as to what's going on. How they do it, I don't know, because we know that there's wiretapping. We know the government's, you know, wiring, uh, listening to people's phone calls, going back and forth to those countries. But they still know how to operate. They still have found a way, probably through the internet, to communicate. And it's next to impossible sometimes to uh, discover that, find out who's who. But that's what I'm simply saying, is it's a very good possibility, and I'd be willing to bet a lot of money that we're going to find out one day that a lot of the sleeper cells here in America, not a few, a lot, are operating from these motel rooms. Or again, I'll say again, or they have people who are their eyes and ears who are operating these, who bought and work and run these motels because they're a great place to, to uh, operate from. Just kind of like if I were, you know, we know China spies on us from within the United States, and anywhere they can, outside the United States, of course, too. We know the Russians do. We know uh, a number of countries do. Probably Russia and China more than anybody, and probably the French. Um, it's interesting that I was just in Biloxi, Mississippi, a couple weeks ago, and the motel I stayed at was right by Keesler Air Force Base. It's interesting that the owners of the motel were all Chinese. Why would you, a, a, from somebody from China, buy a motel next to Keesler Air Force Base? So they can spy on it. I don't know how they could spy on it. I don't know what they think they're going to get from it. 
you know, because much of the base is open, you know, pretty much open. You find a lot about it on the internet. But we do know, and I served in the military, I do know this, that uh, the Russians and the Chinese do have spies here in the United States that spy on our bases. What a great place to do it from, right out of a motel. So I think Osama bin Laden and the idiots over that in uh, Iran, in other words, the Islamic clerics, I'm sure they know that too. And I'm sure they, they probably figured out that this is a great way to spy on America, to receive information back to them from their eyes and ears, or, them, or they may just actually have their own terrorists ready to attack us here in the United States. Here's, a, here's an example of what I'm talking about. I can remember back in 1990, I uh, was at, taking a course at the Washington Homes Votech in Shipley, Florida. And the three motels that I stayed at during that six-week course, uh, excuse me, eight-week course, um, were bought out by foreigners. Every single one of them was from either India or Pakistan. Now, the first one, I uh, bringing the room out by the week at 100 bucks a week, um, came from Pakistan. And I remember on my third week there, you know, it had been bought out. And I remember the, the owner was cold-blooded, very suspicious about anything I did, didn't really seem to want anybody to stay there. And uh, he kind of like pushed me away, when are you leaving, when are you leaving? So, of course, I did leave and end up going to another motel. A few days later, somebody from Pakistan bought that motel. But before I left the other motel, and this one is located close to Interstate 10, um, some of the Pakistani relatives, he claimed they were relatives, kept knocking on my door, asking me where the Tallahassee airport was. And I was about, about like only about two or three of us living in that whole motel. It wasn't a very, you know, ritzy hotel or anything. And um, these people... You know, during that week I saw that, there were so many different uh, people coming and going from that motel. And they were cold-blooded. These were not um, amateurs at anything. These were professionals. These were these were Pakistani that were pretty into something. These were not a bunch of, you know, dishwashers, housekeepers, anything like that. These were some very sophisticated uh, men that I saw coming and going from that motel. And... That had just dawned on me back then, even back then, about the possibility that if I were a terrorist, and this is even, you know, before terrorism really took root as far as a, a, uh, uh, the concept that a major attack would take place here in the United States uh, came about. But that's just something I've always thought about. And all the places I've just come, you know, from Colorado, and I'll be heading back to California, Hawaii soon, and I'll be staying at more motels. And it's just amazing at how many foreigners own these motels now. And I believe that's where they're going to be found. Some of them are going to be found. If they're not found on the motels, then the people that run them will be the eyes and ears. Will be, it will be learned that the motel owners were the eyes and ears of Al-Qaeda or of the clerics of Iran and other terrorist organizations, foreign terrorist organizations, or Islamic terrorist organizations. I just hope our FBI knows this. I really do. Have you ever noticed nobody is asking the FBI, putting pressure on the FBI to explain or ask this, ask them the simple question. What are you doing to find the sleeper cells here in the United States? If they're here, why aren't you trying to find them? And if, you, if you're if you not trying to find them, why not? And if you are trying to find them, why can't you find them? Go to some of these motels. But please let me in here and say this here. Please don't stereotype anybody. You go to a motel, you see somebody from Pakistan, 99.9% .9 chance they're not going to be terrorists at all. So don't do that. Just go on your you know, with your business. Don't stereotype anybody. we That's not the American way. I'm, this is something that our government needs to take care of. This is something the FBI needs to take care of. But it's just something that we need to be aware of. That's all I'm simply trying to say. Thank you for your time.